Yes, indeed. So we're asking this question, you know, when did the vegan movement stop being petrified of the word vegan? And um, we're only talking about the recent history, really. We're starting with the grassroots, where my heart is. This is a magazine that was written by a friend of mine called Neil Lee. Now, they always used to include this on rights calendar. So we're talking about this is 1996. We're talking about coming up to the end of the last century and the beginning of, of this century. Now, the big events of 1996 in terms of national events was a mass vegetarian rally and picnic in London and also National Vegetarian Week. There is mention of the London Vegan Group, which had started by then, but the overwhelming uh, focus at this time was on vegetarianism. Here's Archangel, who were very supportive of direct action and also of veganism another grassroots publication. It was the grassroots that really pushed this change. Here they're advertising the second national uh, vegan festival. Again, we're talking about 1999. So the end of the last century, the beginning of this one. When we move to the national groups, this is Viva. So this is 1998 through to 2000. And do you see the name, the top left there, Vegetarian International Voice for Animals. Now, they've been through a few different names, but this one was the one that stuck for the longest and only changed fairly uh, recently. The article to the right at the top there is about pig slaughter. In particular, it's about the electrified tongue stunning method. And it's really these kind of articles and this kind of move at this kind of time that led to the research that ended up with the gas chambers. Now, I know... In the modern day, we complain about the gas chambers, but back in this day, which is not that long ago, groups, certainly like Peter, were campaigning for the gas chambers and on animal welfare grounds. And then with the arrow there, you see the end of that thing where they talk about pig slaughter, how terrible it is and everything, and then they offer a go veggie information pack. The little um, yellow box there, which is quite interesting, we're starting to see veganism featuring in the national groups. But usually we talk about recipes and always we're talking about veganism presented as a diet. One thing which is uh, very kind of prevalent is that veganism is presented as a diet and not a philosophy, which arguably you could say still is the case today. When it comes up to uh, 2012, this is only 12 years ago, still have the name, International uh, Voice for Animals, the Vegetarians. And um, again, we see that this change has been fairly uh, recent. If we drop back to the 1990s, this is the end of the century again, this is Animal Aid. They're celebrating their veggie month and also the solution to world hunger was seen as vegetarianism. This is their youth page. Now, Veganism was much more likely to be featured in their youth page than in their main pages, probably because they thought that the, the young people wouldn't object uh, so much. But again, it's exclusively presented as a diet. And in fact, this article says that veganism may be much more difficult than vegetarianism. So this is 2006. We're still talking about veggie month. But the, here where you see a bit of a change, this is where you start to get a mix and match of vegetarian stuff and vegan stuff. Before that, it was often suggested that vegetarianism and veganism was pretty much the, the same kind of thing. It was pretty much, um, you know, they could interchange. Now we're seeing the differentiation. But again, veganism is presented as a diet. So this is uh, 2012 in Dublin. Uh, this is the notes for a animal aid school talk talk and I went to that and it's guidelines on talks for vegetarianism there is one and a half lines in this about veganism everything else is about vegetarianism and both of them are presented as a diet in the middle we've got 2006 then we've got 2009 again veggie months and then you've also got the animal aid resources for vegetarians uh, at the end of the century so again this same pattern is being repeated, that the emphasis is on vegetarianism and there's a reluctance to bring in vegan stuff. And when it is brought in, it's presented as a diet. Okay, moving to Peter, 
they've had a long relationship with Paul McCartney, as many of you will know. So to the left there, that's Paul and Linda McCartney. So we talk about the mid 1990s. The messages go veggie. Uh, it's updated in 2000. You can see at the bottom there. So the message now becomes go vegan. But then you also see 2012, you've still got a go vegetarian message from Peter because Paul McCartney would never go vegan. And so in some senses, because of their celebrity focus, they were, they were forced to give out a kind of mixed uh, message, vegetarianism and veganism. When we come up to more present time, the um, Rise Against is an interesting one. The Meet His Murder poster, Go Vegetarian. Now, Rise Against, um, described in the blurb as um, their members are made up of vegetarians and vegans, but the the main headline is always vegetarian. It's interesting, really, because these this is a straight edge ba uh, band, uh, and usually straight edge is associated with veganism. But there are some kind of vegetarian elements to it, and they found a vegetarian one, as it were, to promote rather than a vegan one. And then the latest thing here is 2019, so five years ago, we've got vegetarianism being promoted uh, via a Indian actor who was voted by Peter as India's hottest uh, man, apparently. Okay, this is uh, present day now, and this is Peter in Britain. This one is really disappointing um, in a sense because, again, veganism is presented as a diet. Again, veganism and vegetarianism is presented as almost being the same type of thing. And when it comes to the motivation for vegetarianism and veganism, they suggest that um, most people do it because they love uh, our fellow animals. So again, the philosophy is nowhere to be seen. And in fact, if anything, this is a little bit of kind of going backwards. So where are we? Why, why, why is it like this? Now, some writers in the movement have suggested that the reluctance to go vegan, the prevalence of the vegetarian message is to do with funding. So here we can see some examples of that. This is um, animal equality. Animal equality present themselves to the movement as a vegan animal rights organization, but they get a lot of money doing their cage-free and broiler welfare uh, campaigns. Here we can see 10, almost 11 million dollars uh, being spent on welfare campaigns. It's even worse with Mercy for Animals, 25 million dollars, their last corporate welfare campaign it's called, that, that got a donation of 12.5 million dollars. So there's a lot of money in animal welfare and perhaps not quite as much in, in veganism, so that might be part of the story. But that's certainly the story in the in the groups. The grassroots led the change. The national groups have followed, but fairly reluctantly. But they're getting there now. And then, but we've still got um, a big welfare component because that's where quite a lot of uh, the money is. Uh, 